we got to talk about this issue with the DEI in one aspect of American culture that is considered the last frontier. The diversity, uh, what is it? The uh, dumb everybody idiots. That's what DEI stands for. It is. It's what it's. It's what it is. It's part of this Marxist CRT effort, and you've seen it in in movies. You've seen it in music. It's been in Hollywood. You see it in academics, and a lot of people think that if there is a slice of American life in which they do not participate, then it doesn't affect them. Which, as we've seen, that's an absolute lie. Right? You. We've seen due process eroded by going through the doorway of firearm ownership. And I've always warned people, just because you don't own firearms does not mean, that's a variable, does not mean that this cannot, this formula cannot be weaponized against you as well. If they can cite something with firearms, they'll cite something with any, no, any issue. And there's one particular bit of American life that I think that conservatives are really weird about. And I, I think it's because a lot of them are just unfamiliar with it. And I've noticed that conservatives treat this industry now the way that conservatives treated Hollywood and academia back in the 40s and 50s. They gave up on it. They didn't think that it was a worthwhile investment of their time. They didn't engage. One of the, the two biggest at the time, academics and movies and music, Hollywood, arts and entertainment, the biggest distribution methods of information. And conservatives just gave up on it. They didn't get involved. We all know this. We all talk about it. What did they do? They retreated to their think tanks and their associations, and they went and elected office, and that's all well and good. But everything political first is a cultural issue. Again, DEI and CRT is just an example. It began as a cultural touchstone in college in the 60s under Derrick Bell. And then it manifest throughout the decades to actual policy and law that we see today. Anyone who tells you otherwise is ignorant of culture, too ignorant to ever be taken seriously on any issue. It's dangerous to listen to dumb people. Politics is forever downstream from pop culture. So as I said, there's a particular industry that American, that conservatives look at, and not just conservatives in the United States, but I think writ large, look at as though, eh, it's like Hollywood, it's like arts and entertainment and academia in the 40s and 50s. Uh, we shouldn't get, that's not us. We don't do this. We don't take part in it. We don't have anything to do with it. Some actually cast a wary eye on it. Some, the moment I mention it, they tune out. And you know what that industry is. It's the gaming industry. You would be shocked at how many libertarians and conservatives are in gaming. Shocked. And that's only if you are unfamiliar with the community. It is, yes, it's people sitting down and playing video games. And yes, I play, I casually play. I'm not like a super serious gamer. I don't even use that to describe myself. There's only certain types of games that I play. And I enjoy them because it's escapist. It's away from politics. I always have to be doing something. I like to be engaged. I like to think. And I like stuff that requires a, the, the, the involvement of strategy, right? Requires strategy. And there's a lot of really, really great titles out there. And it's a place where everybody can go and get away from the noise of everything is racist or sexist or this or that or this or that. Or it was anyway. And just like DEI and CRT came for your movies and your television shows and your stories and your songs and then your books and your degrees and now it's even lowering the standards in medicine and it's going after and lowering standards regarding science and it's in our military and it's everywhere else. Gaming has been the last frontier because by and large people look at gamers like they're weird, especially if they're adults. And that's not the case. And, and as Penn and Teller's brilliant episode of BS, the show that I name I can't say on air, 
they explored this a decade ago. It is absolutely mind-numbingly ridiculous to say that playing violent video games leads to violence. It is a gun control argument that some well-meaning but clueless conservatives have adopted to use to describe video games. Just know that you're literally using gun grabber formulation to now try to denigrate a perfectly acceptable recreational activity. And so by and large, they've ignored gaming and they thought it doesn't apply to us. It doesn't have anything to do with us. Well, it does because a lot of your latest television shows are coming from gaming stories. A lot of your movies are coming from the video game realm. A lot of, st- a lot of your stuff, a lot of music is coming from gaming now. It is the last frontier of non-PC and it's getting, it's under attack by DEI. We told you uh, a few weeks ago about Sweet Baby Inc. They, they have these stupid consultancy firms and these consultancy firms create themselves and they bestow upon themselves the authority of what you should be able to see in terms of what titles are published and which aren't. And you have to be DEI, you know, all of this stuff in order to be accepted. And if you're not, then they try to get a rage, a rage mob against you and shut you down and run you out of business and shame you. There have been people's lives who have been, uh, I mean, there are people who have killed themselves over this. Entire companies have folded because of the rage mob. And it's running rampant in games because a lot of people don't know really how to handle it. They're unfamiliar with gaming. And they're doing it again. There's a story. It's a, t- it's a game called Stellar Blade. I don't play it. I mean, I, I like first-person shooter games and, and things like that. I, I want to be able to strategize on how to take down giant beasts. Uh, and I've not played this game. But it's, I mean, it, it's, it's a very popular game. So long story short, this, this game called Stellar Blade... Uh, some of the um, e-girls, I guess, are upset uh, because they are mad about the female character Eve's outfit. And I find it incredibly ironic that chicks, and this is not all of them. I have, uh, I know some really fantastic women who stream, they're on Twitch, they play games, and they're engaging without having to show uh, their boobs they're engaging without having to act like whores. They're engaging and, and they play well. They actually play well. They're not like, oh, I'm a chick. I'm going to start a band and all I know is three power chords. Like they actually can, you know, play. But there's a small number of girls, these e-girls, that think that Eve was dressed too skimpily. And they were complaining about this while wearing necklines that went down to their navels. And demanding that video game characters do not dress as they do when they're streaming. Which I think is incredibly ironic. And it's, yes, it's absolutely a valid observation. And so they decided that the uh, developers, they were being pressured to like, you know, they were going to have an update. We're going to give you some clothes. There was like, for instance, this holiday rabbit bunny suit. And they altered it and they were basically covering her up a little bit. Oh my gosh. And there were some players who were so tired of all of this 4th, 5th, 11th wave feminist nonsense and all of this other stupid stuff infecting games that they said, okay, we, this is, you're censoring things now. We want a refund. And so they started refunding people. And then all of these chicks that were the original people that had a fit about a, char- a video game character's outfits are now going, can you believe that these people want refunds over this video game character's outfits? You see what I'm saying? And so now there have been some developers and some game, some players that have stood up and said, we're tired of this and they're pushing back and they're like, you know, save Stellar Blade. I see there's a petition trying to get it to go back the way it was. And everyone's saying it's like Gamergate 2, which was the first, Gamergate 1 was the first blow up. Now it sounds like it's silly. You might think because you don't play video games, this is so dumb. Why are people upset over this? But it's not the outfit and it's not the refund and it's not any of that stuff. It is the fact that here you again have another instance of this stupid woke scold movement trying to go out and pressure game developers and these publishers into changing or altering things. They're going through it with... uh, with, uh, uh, Warhammer right now and there is a there's a all-male class of warriors that they're now trying to say oh well there's females in it too they're revising their canon 
so that they can be more female friendly. They're female friendly already. They have an all female warrior tribe already. You don't need to insert women in the male all warrior tribe. You don't need to do that. The custodes, you don't need to do that. This is what I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with outfits. It has everything to do with hijacking and colonizing game spaces and turning them into absolute crap. That's what it is. They want everything to be like Borderlands where you are awarded after you beat the boss, the final boss, you're awarded by a rainbow color unicorn called Butt Stallion and a trans warrior. Yeah. They want to make everything like Borderlands, which is so annoying. I almost want to vomit rainbows. I couldn't even, I was done. I deleted it. I was done. This is what I'm talking about. Yes, that was the Tiny Tina deal, but you understand what I'm saying. So you need to pay attention to this stuff because I guarantee you, your kids are or your grandkids are. And this is what they like to do. And they're, the stuff that they like to do and the places that they like to go to escape this nonsense is under attack. So where are you? Just because you're not involved in it doesn't mean you shouldn't speak up for what's right. You speak up when DEI is getting people fired at their workplaces. You speak up when you don't want to have to change your pronoun usage. This stuff is happening in gaming now. And it is the last frontier. Don't be like the conservatives back in the 40s and 50s with Hollywood and academia and turn your head and then bitch about it 20 years later when another slice of American life is taken over. Stop giving them pie slices. They're taking the whole damn dessert. Stop. Stop. 